Murder kidnap suspect plans to plead guilty. Club owner charges for filling liquor bottles with water. Man faces charges for violating measles quarantine. These stories and others coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and welcome to Community News Review for Friday, March 8, 2019. Rosemary Truster submitted her resignation as 4th District Elder Person for the City of Sheboygan late last month. The Council will vote at their March 18th meeting to determine who will serve out the rest of that term until this seat is up for re-election next year. Mayor Mike Vandersteen says that whoever fills the spot will finish out the year and then would be able to run for another two-year term after that time. If you are interested, you should call the city's clerk office, but need to do that by March 15th. A couple is in trouble over a trip to the gym in spite of a measles quarantine. Authorities say have of Milwaukee have charged Jeffrey Morosky and his wife with violating a quarantine order. The county health department had ordered 57-year-old Morosky to stay home until he was not contagious. Prosecutors say he and his wife drove him to the Gold's Gym to work out anyway. A criminal complaint says Morosky eventually admitted to going inside of the Gold's Gym to work out, but he stated he was only there for a few minutes, indicating that he felt very guilty and sick to his stomach for deciding to leave his residence. His lawyer said at no time was Mr. Morosky informed that he tested positive for measles, nor did he exhibit any symptoms at the time. He was exposed to measles, but was asymptomatic. He was ordered to stay in his apartment for 21 days and he was monitored by police. Both he and his wife are due in court on March 25th and he could get 30 days in jail. A business owner in Eagle River is being accused of refilling liquor bottles with water. Carrie Jo Newman, the owner of Frontier Tavern, is being charged in Villas County for illegally filling vodka bottles with water. According to the criminal complaint, the Department of Revenue, Alcohol, and Tobacco Enforcement conducted an investigation into the adult entertainment business back in November of 2018. Court documents also Note, no one on site had a liquor license despite the establishment selling alcohol. Investigators, along with finding the bottles filled with water, found liquor bottles that the owner had not purchased. Newman told investigators that the bottles filled with water were for employees to drink from. She also said that the other employees or the other bottles were for the employee's personal use. Frontier Tavern has been investigated before and two separate investigations in March of 2015 and February of 2017 gave written warnings to Newman for similar findings. If convicted, Newman could face up to $2,500 in fines and one year in prison. These violations could also result in the suspension or revocation of the retail alcohol license. About half of the money from Governor Tony Evers' proposed building program would be spent on University of Wisconsin campuses. The governor's office Thursday said that they want to spend about $1 billion of the $2.4 billion that the governor is asking for on-campus projects. In all, Evers' building plan in is three times larger than what the Republican lawmakers approved of last year, and his proposal is based on about a half billion in loans. UW system leaders are happy with the plan, but Republican lawmakers say it costs far too much. The plan needs to be reviewed by the GOP-controlled Joint Finance Committee and then be approved by the state legislature. It is likely that the plan will be scaled back considerably. 
U.S. Senator Ron Johnson says President Trump has the authority to declare a national emergency at the southern border. The Wisconsin Republican said Thursday that he hopes members of his party in the Senate can come up with their own piece of legislation that shows support of the emergency declaration. A resolution that disapproves of the border emergency has already passed the Democratic-controlled House of Representatives and appears to have enough support to pass the Senate. GOP Senator Ron Paul of Kentucky says he believes up to 10 Republican senators will break ranks with President Trump. Trump has promised to veto the measure and the issue will ultimately be resolved in court. Johnson says Republicans in the Senate support building the wall and want to secure the border and are behind President Trump. And finally, in a jailhouse letter to a Minneapolis TV station, the suspect in the Jamie Kloss kidnapping says he will plead guilty. Care TV reported that Jake Patterson responded to a letter that was sent to him by one of their reporters. In that letter, he wrote that he does not want Jamie's family to worry about the trial. The letter also says that he has huge amounts of remorse for the crimes and that he couldn't say exactly why he kidnapped Jamie, noting that the situation was complicated and not black and white. He said it was mostly on impulse and stressed that he does not think like a serial killer. The Barron County Sheriff has not responded to the report, and Chris Fitzgerald said he was aware that Peter Patterson had received a letter from Care TV reporter and that Patterson responded to it. A judge has already ruled that there is not enough evidence for it, Patterson to stand trial, and he is scheduled for arraignment on March 27th. He would enter a plea at that time. The Associated Press attempted to reach Patterson's lawyers about the developments, and they have not yet responded. Patterson is accused of breaking into the Kloss family home in 2018, killing her parents and abducting Jamie. She was held for 88 days in a home in Gordon, about an hour away until she escaped in January. And that is all we have for today. Join me again on Monday for more local news and stories on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.